we're onward. I don't know which, if we're going or like coming or going onward. All right, so there's railroad tracks on the map. But there's supposed to be three giant missiles. So um, we thought this was a silo, and um, it's it's not. It's kind of like a landfill thing. My hopes are still up for the silos. We're gonna find one. Just it's gonna take some looking. In the 1960s, the U.S. government, afraid of a nuclear attack, built missile bases across the country. Years later, most were decommissioned and then privatized. Apparently, some are still lying around. We went all the way to Washington State to look for one. Dave, a missile silo enthusiast, agreed to show us around. Wait, how far does this expand? Where does it start? Where would the missiles go? Uh, this whole facility inside the fence is about 12 acres and um, pretty much most of the 12 acres has tunnels and uh, all sorts of stuff underneath. This is the entrance right here for uh, just people walking down. There's an elevator over here that used to work. Um, that's a huge cargo freight elevator that goes all the way down to the bottom. I believe it's about 60 feet. And then um, there's tunnels that go out in all directions. Uh, there's antenna silos over there. Um, there's also the missile silos there's one over there, there are three in total, and uh, all of those go down about 160 feet. And um, that's where the missiles used to be held. They would go up on an elevator through the, through the bay doors and then be launched up, uh, headed towards Russia or wherever. <laughs> This is at the end of this. Uh, is it open? Um, it goes out to uh, two silos, and so it branches off, and then there's uh, two huge silos that go up to the surface. There's also a control dome, a power dome, just uh, a lot of stuff going on down here. It would take hours and hours to, to show you the whole thing. Sorry, do you mind? <laughs> no, thank you. So each one of these uh, doors here is about 150 tons. And uh, they used to have um, huge hydraulic equipment underneath that would lift these things up. And then uh, the missile would be on a big elevator. And uh, it's about 160 feet tall. So it would lift it up into the air. And then uh, it would launch it directly from here over to Russia. Um, there's three like this in Washington. And another one of my friends owns another one. but. Uh, the whole silo is just flooded with water because uh, that one's below the water table. Oh, wow. And it's actually kind of cool because uh, people do scuba training inside the silos there. And, uh, and then people, I guess SWAT, team, uh, SWAT teams do training inside the silo as well. So some people live in these, and then what other functions do they serve? Like now that, you know, obviously there's no Cold War. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out what to do with them. Um, there's another guy out here that's uh, part of the UFO Research Center, and um, he's moving his operations to a missile silo out there. It seems like you have to be somewhat eccentric and weird <laughs> in order to own something like this. But I hope to own one of these someday. <laughs> Before leaving the site, a security guard shared some interesting stories. He wasn't very comfortable on camera, though. It was constructed in the late 50s, right during construction. It wasn't the originating plan for it, but there was a double agent, so the U.S. used that to leak that information and let that double agent infiltrate that info back to the Soviet Union. So they finished it as a facade, so the Soviet Union basically wasted almost all their money and their, their reserves on these obsolete bases, so we used that to our advantage. So, But yeah, it was one of the one of the state-of-the-art uh, engineering feats back in the day. Everything would, you know, withstand, you know, megaton hits. 
Well, another thing as far as it wasn't very high tech, if there was a malfunction with a missile actually going off, there was a guy, this whole job was with a hunting rifle stand and just keep shooting at the missile until it blew up. And it was a suicide mission, so everyone would get out, but he would, you know, he'd be call his, call his wife and tell, kiss the kids and, you know, but if you want to look on the other end, he had a, probably a pretty cushy job. <laughs> oh, until yeah, that day. You know, yeah. I wanted to learn more. I decided to fly all the way to Kansas to meet Ed. Okay, this is an Atlas E missile site. Oh, wow. See, th this room is 100 feet long, 100 feet long. The missile was 75 feet long, so it was a very large, large part of this room, and it lay on its side in here. Let me tell you how this worked now. Of course, the missile's laying in here. It's got the warhead on the top. If they were to get launch orders from the president, that'd be a really bad day. But they get launch orders. One of the first things that would happen, they would unlock the overhead door. These little square areas are the door locks. This whole ceiling is a door that rolls back to the west. Then there's the equipment back here. Let's go this way. Notice this very large chain bicycle chain, but look at it. Oh, that it's one. so big. Wow, yeah. And, and look at that, wonder what size wrench that took. <gasps> but you see these arms came down, they stretched out over the missile, and with the door open, the, there were very big motors back up there, back up in that loft area, you see that little pedestal yeah. up there? There were motors there, and they could uh, pull that missile up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see down there, it's deep yeah. and it's big. This was the, the uh, exhaust for the rocket. The rocket would be pointed up 75 feet, this large rocket sitting right here over this hole. And then when it was fired, all of the exhaust and all the flame and all of that went down in this and went out of the building. This is very complicated under there. It goes, exits the building to the south. But uh, right here, I mean, this is a powerful point where uh, the rocket stood and this thing could go anywhere on the planet and kill a whole lot of people. It's kind of a sad thought. So what, what is this, what's the function of this tunnel? Okay, see, uh, everything that was going to happen up here with this missile is going to be controlled from down here. So there was all kind of wiring and electrical connections of all very complicated kind of things was all coming through this tunnel. And then it goes down here and goes into the launch control room where the missileers could actually launch it from down here. So here we are. We call this area the history nook. And this is the launch control panel. A missileer sitting at this panel could do everything down there and launch this missile. Somebody ripped off a really cool yeah. button, you know. I just want to show you this panel. For one thing, there's the uh, telephone here. Wow. Imagine calling the president, talking about, you really want to launch these things? Of course, everything that was going to happen down there with this missile was controlled from mostly from this panel right here. And here's an interesting one. Do you want to select target A? Do you want to hit uh, <laughs> Moscow or target B? St. Petersburg. Wow. And, and even after the missile was launched, here we can control the downrange. Uh, we can make a little adjustments. It's a little windy today. Oh, yeah. It's a little left a little bit. We don't want to miss Moscow. Ed not only holds loads of information about these places, he's also a real estate agent who specializes in selling them. Like this, like this oh. is flooded. There's scary doors. You have to crawl through the ground to get in. You know, like how do you how do you pitch this? To well, that can all be changed. I mean, this is a multi-million-dollar structure. Uh, it, it cost approximately 14 million dollars to build this structure in 1960 dollars, and it's very well built. 
and there are people interested in it. This is a collectible piece of real estate in the rough. Now there's no railing here, so you want to be real careful coming down here. Oh, wow. <laughs> And here we are on the upper floor of the launch control building. This was the bathroom. You can see the plumbing pipes and things over here. Uh, it's been, so, nothing's happened here since the 1960s pretty much, except maybe some kids partying. This is like uh, touring the Titanic or something after it's been underwater for a while. The launch control panel to launch this thing was sitting right here. This is a box where they had some keys, and it's a double lock box. You see there's a lock here, and then the door here is, is gone, but there was a double lock, and so it took two keys to get in here to get the other keys that were in there. And wow. it was kind of a fail-safe system. So, so you, you needed know, two people right. and authorization, perhaps? Exactly. It's actually exactly. the cookie jar. Yeah. Here, look at the strength of these I-beams and this metal floor. Very, very strong. Some of the, I mean, how many homes have structure like this in it? Yeah, not, not, not my house. <laughs> not many. The, and this thing is going to last. This thing will be here for just hundreds of years. It's, it, termites won't eat it. Wind won't blow it away. Yeah. It might flood, <laughs> but it's going to be here for a long, long time. There are only 72 of these in existence and there will never be another built on the planet like this, ever. Yeah. So it's a collectible piece of real estate. Okay. Let me go down here and I will assist you coming down. Here, I'll Shine your light for me here. And now this is the Let's tunnel that leads in. out to the silo and it's full of crap. And the only way to see the silo is to sneak out through this little area here, if you would. Just go out there and have a look, <laughs> look into this big silo. It might take your breath away. Oh, wow. Make a shout in there and hear the vibration. Oi, oi! This was the launch control room, and now we've converted it to our living room. There were three men in this room around the clock for four years, ready wow. to blow up a Russian city. And so what we did in the room, we have brought in uh, spiritual artifacts from many of the world's major religions. So you, you guys did do some redecorating and oh. you know changing the space, but you also yeah. you know you're also taking care of a a more like an energy element in the building. Yes, it was a, yeah. a giant weapon of mass destruction here, and we live in it now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, this is, this is a big room. The stage is a lot of fun. We have drum circles <laughs> here. Yeah, we've kind of converted into what we sometimes call the temple room. Hey, try this drum right here. <laughs> just, just sit there. And I'll do this, and then I'll play the flute. Put your hand right in the middle of it there. Carry on, keep it going. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, we like this room a lot. <laughs> uh, it's, it's big. We have uh, gatherings and parties in here. Sometimes we'll have 20 people with drums in a circle, we'll have dancers in the middle. We're always working with converting that negative, destructive energy into something peaceful and loving. Mm -hmm.